This is the new Audi e-tron Sportback, and as the name suggests, it's an e-tron, but with a sporty back. It's a coupe version of their electric SUV. And here's the things you need to know about it. Right, let's talk about the design of this e-tron Sportback. So actually at the front, the design is the same as the normal e-tron SUV. Even the windscreen and front door are the same. In fact, up to this point, it's identical. It's even the same height and the same width and the same length. But here, as you can see, the roof line is sloping. It starts to be a bit different, though the lower part of the door is the same as a normal e-tron SUV. This bit here is different, though the rear lights and the rear bumper are the same as the SUV. This Tailgate is slightly different though. So some parts are the same, some parts are different, but for me, it looks like quite a different vehicle. It's witchcraft. But which do you prefer the look of? The normal e-tron SUV or this Sportback version? Click on the pop-out banner just up there to cast you out. Let me know what you think. You know how you can get those cool headlights with Audis where they do that little dance when you turn them on and they actually have like 32 little matrix LEDs so they can blank out part of their beam? Well, this car goes one better. Rather than 32, LEDs, they have a special chip that is used in projectors and that has 1.2 million pixels. So they can pretty much do what the heck they want with the light, put it wherever they need it. They can put it to highlight a pedestrian at the side of the road. They can actually lay a carpet of light in front of you as you're driving so you can follow it and other road users can see it. And of course they can do the animations, but they can do far more than ever before as I'll show you now. Welcome to the darkness and I'm having to illuminate myself with my mobile phone torch, otherwise you can't see me. That's all gonna be Blair Witch. I've got Dita here to help me as well, so I can explain things and hold the torch on myself. To operate the system, you just choose whichever animation you want, and the system works when you get out of the car, as Dita is pretending to do now. And there we go, look at that. Yeah, that's different, isn't it? I've never seen that before on a car. But if you don't like that pattern, don't you worry about that at all, because Audi gives you some choice. I'm gonna go for one called Diagonal which is a little bit more Bauhaus, a bit more German. There we go, look at that. Once again, if you don't like that, you can always choose another one, split. Now, because you have this projector system in the car, you can pretty much display whatever you want there. If they wanted to, they could actually run a movie out there. Obviously, it would have to be in black and white because the car lights are only light or off. There's no color bulbs in there. Here's one called Cosmos. I wonder what this one's like. Oh, I quite like that one, actually. Going for the round effect. And there's just one more, origami. The thing that's actually allowing all this to be possible is this little chip there. It's not cheap though. That and all the optics that are required to make this thing all work are rather expensive. Nothing gets you nothing. Everything has a little price. Launch edition versions of the Sportback e-tron are not only fully loaded, but they get some extra bits of kit to help mark them out. For instance, they get unique alloy wheel designs, unique silver bits of trim, and unique plasma blue paint. Now, one of the problems of that sloping, cool-looking tailgate is the fact that you've got slightly less boot space. Yep. Okay, so. The normal e-tron has 660 litres of space. This one has 615 and most of that loss is due to this area, just being a little bit more sporty looking. You pays your money, you takes your choice. Do you want your car to look cool or do you want it to be more practical? It's up to you. That sloping roof line also means the slightly less rear passenger headroom here in the e-tron Sportback compared to the normal e-tron. So it's 20 millimeters less, which isn't actually all that much. And indeed, if I sit up straight, look, I'm your average size male, 179 centimeters. I still do have about that much headspace. So it's all right. People over six foot will still be fine back here. When building this car, Audi spoke to customers who have the normal e-tron SUV. And some of them said, we'd like a bit more regenerative braking effect. So they'd like it to just slow a bit more when you lift off the accelerator. Audi's responded by making this car do that. Now the actual efficiency of recharging the battery is not improved, just the sensation you get when you lift off. And it means the car's even easier to drive on one pedal alone. And that upgrade will be fitted to future e-tron SUVs, the normal car as well. Here in the front of the e-tron Sportback, there is no change over the normal e-tron SUV. So you've got a simple well-made cabin, you've got those two screens here on the center console, the digital driver's display there, and you can specify it, of course, with cameras instead of side mirrors. 
and you have these cool screens where you can actually move the image around like that to position the mirror or camera, whatever you want to call it, just as you like it. Pretty much identical then, apart from the price. You see, because this e-tron Sportback is cooler, you have to pay more for it. It's going to be about £3,000 more. So the normal e-tron starts from around £71,500. So this is going to be around £75,000. But you should click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow to see how much you can save on this, a normal e-tron, or any car for that matter. While this e-tron Sportback may look more sporty than the SUV, in terms of the driving dynamics, it's identical because the suspension is the same, the geometry is the same. It's all set up the same. The normal car has two electric motors and 408 horsepower if you have the 55, but you can also get a 50 version, which has 320 horsepower. Now it's cheaper, it's about 10 grand cheaper, but you do have a smaller battery. As a result, it can do about 100 kilometers less in terms of its range. As with the normal e-tron, this Sportback version can be charged from 5% full to 80% full in just 30 minutes if you can find yourself a 150 kilowatt hour charger. Can you find one? Well, if not, you're probably just gonna use an 11 watt wall charger. Then that's gonna take eight hours. It's a bit more annoying, but hey, there you go. I do love this fact though, that they have charging points on both sides of the car. So you can park it whichever way and you can still get your cable into the car nice and easily. Bravo. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.